Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I've got quite a lot going on. I do some machining, some milling work, uh, basically fitting that travel dial to the Harrison lathe. I get most of that done. I'm probably sure quite a good amount of that. Last weekend, as I said, I was wearing a steam rally at Scorton. Uh, it was a good weekend. I put a couple of videos up uh, showing the various things up at the rally. You've probably already seen them, so I won't be putting any more steam engine stuff in this week's nightcap. However, there is some steam stuff in it. Uh, a friend of mine called into the garage two or three weeks ago to say that was scrapping a uh, old steam boiler. Uh, would I like any parts of it? Well, probably yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, Mick and I went and had a look. Uh, we've got a couple of nice water gauges of it. I've got to go back with a grinder and cut some of the, the valves and things off. Some of the valves and things I'll just use for scrap brass for casting, but the water gauges are really nice and I'm sure we'll be able to find a home for them uh, working again on a boiler, which is what the lad wanted. He didn't want to see them, just dragged away at the scrapyard. So I showed quite a bit of that. When we were there, he also came out with a, uh, a wooden box um, full of bits and pieces. I'll show what was in there, that was quite a surprise. Debs has done well, she's improving all the time, she's lost weight every week, she's getting a lot of exercise. She's actually at work today, this will be her first full 8 hour shift she's done uh, since she's returned to work. She, she comes home tired but she's happy, she's enjoying it, um, she's, she's meeting people, she's getting back into the routine of going to work which is just what she needed. I'd like to get out of the routine of going to work but anyway we've got to do what we've got to do. Um, my dad's doing well. He was actually 84 last Sunday, um, mentally he's great, his health's not fantastic, his legs aren't good, but he is getting out and about now and then, and he's just bought himself a, a new laptop computer and a new camera, so who's supposed to see the con show and the world dog, new tricks. Anyway, I did put a picture of my dad up on Facebook, and uh, there was a lot of people wishing him happy birthday, anyway, thanks very much for that. If you watch my channel, there's a good chance you watch the likes of Aaron Booth, Keith Fenner, Tom Lipton. There's quite a few of them, nearly all Americans, that do engineering, similar sort of thing to what I do. Uh, this last week they've had a big get-together in America. Unfortunately, I couldn't get there. It's a little bit far for me, but I hope to go possibly next year or the year after. Anyway, they have a, a competition there. It's basically setting something up in a four-jaw chuck against the clock, but accurately. Adam Booth has won it for the last couple of years because Adam is obviously good with a four-jaw chuck. Uh, the competition this year was won by Keith Fenner. I can't think of anybody I'd rather have to win it than Keith Fenner. Anyway, so if you're watching this, Keith, congratulations and well done, mate. This is the travel dial that Bob kindly repaired for us. I've mounted it onto its base, it slides onto a dovetail. And on this end, there's a clamp type affair. You turn that Allen key in. And it pushes the reader in to make contact with the side of the bed. I'm going to mount the unit on here. It'll be touching the layer of bed like that. When you move the carriage along, that goes along and gives you the reading. The clever part of it is the wheel there has got a slight curve on it, a slight camber, which means it can jack this slightly up or down to get the correct radius to give you the correct reading. So obviously it's going to read different to the bottom than it is at the top, so you can adjust that to give it an actual spot on reading. This is the mountain it came with. Goes onto there. There are two adjustment screws to adjust the, the tilt of it and there's two retaining bolts going there. That was mounted sort of like mounted on a lathe, obviously different to this. What I intend doing is, I can use the base part because it's already made, so I'll cut that off and I'll probably weld a piece of flat aluminium plate onto it, take this tag off here, and this is nice and thick material, I should be drill and drill and tap and get a good fastening onto there. You need a really substantial bracket so you don't get any flex. The plate gives information about where and when you can and can't disengage the the lead screw for screw cutting. I'm 
It's a reasonably flat face there, so I'll be able to get a mountain onto that. You feel that the material is very thick there, it's at least half an inch thick. I've cut off the part of the bracket I'm going to use. Just use a miller machine just to square the edge up. Well, I haven't hacked sorted very straight. direction that's going into the direction of the cutter that's conventional milling if I do it the other way put a cut on and go that way that's plain milling the cutter's trying to pull the job into the cutter and I found a super bit of aluminium plate I just basically want to square the square the edges up on it. Do that one first. Square edges to work with. Right, I've got the, the two bits clamped on with a bit of angle so I can weld them. I could drill and tap this and bolt it together, but it's just as quick for me to run a weld along there. I managed to glue it together. Not the best weld in the world, but the material was that was. Not the best of materials, but I can assure you that that's welded and it will come apart. Let that cool off, and then we'll go about drilling some holes into it and trying to mount it on the lathe. I've temporarily mounted the reed head onto the brackets. You can see how it works. These are the two bolts that actually clamp it on, and these are the two adjusting bolts. So by loosening one and tightening the other, you can in actual fact tilt that. You can tilt. You can tilt the head like that, and that wheel there is actually curved. So as I've said, it depends on where it's tilted to. It depends on the radius of the wheel that's running. It'll all become apparent, I suppose, once you start to put it together. That's where it's going to be going, mounted on there like that. I need to machine a little bit of that away to clear the, the lead screw. The other problem I've got is this face here is not, not parallel anything. It's actually lying in at the top. So what I'll do... I'll mount this on with two bolts, but I'll also have four set screws or four adjustment screws in there, and they'll be the things that make contact with the casting. That face will not be touching, it'll be the four globe screws that touch, so I can adjust it back and forward, in and out, to make it lie nice and square. Basically, very similar to how I mounted it. When I mounted the DRO on the back of the milling machine, I used the four globe screws to adjust it. One interesting thing, these bolts that hold it down, I've actually got a convex washer on there and a concave washer there, so that allows the bolt head to pivot round 
quite nicely like that and tighten up in any position. When I removed this from the, the layer that was on, it was actually standing off here a good three quarters of an inch. And it was a very, very firm and solid mount. So you can see all the work there, the bullets are able to pivot around like that and yet still have a good contact area. I've got some holes marked out. I'm going to use two M6 bolts to hold it on and four M5 grub screws to adjust it with. I'll do the M5s first. I've got centre pot marks where I need the holes. None of this is critical, so I'm just going to line them up by eye, so to speak. Seeing that, you can get very accurately. Line it up onto a centre pop mark by eye. Drill the top each one in turn on the same setting. I normally use WD40 as a, a top and float for aluminium, I haven't got any at home at the minute. I've got some anchor lube, this is pretty good stuff, I like it. I need to do with this is put a forward and reverse switch on the Miller machine. the first one and then we're only going to line up one axis because we've already got the
This angle loop certainly works for cutting threads on aluminium. Kerosene works as well, but it stinks. WD40 works, it's got a quite a nice smell. Right, so that's what four, five mil holes. Now we need a couple of six mil holes in there, clearance holes for our clamp and down bolts. Pick up the centers for a I'm going to use 6mm bolt to hold it on. A good clearance drill for 6mm is quarter, which is Quite a few people have asked about this Dragon tool. It was actually given to us by a company called Noga. Noga are the, the people that make the, the Noga DTI clamps. I actually use a Noga DTI clamp all the time on one of my video cameras, it's ideal for that. This is a good tool. Derags holes nicely and it also derags edges it's got four blades in it so you've got that one it's a bit like a swiss army knife 